the only thing I want from the McMahon family is to deliver me the Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey. Ronda is the champion now! It's that and gentlemen, welcome to our year-end roundup at Takamania. I'm Desmino, here with my Heart Foundation brethren, J-Bomb. Say howdy, J-Bomb. Happy holidays. What is up, man? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. I'm actually, I had a very good holiday, uh, I guess Christmas. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad it's over just because you get that whole, uh, I've never been more tired in the past, I guess, two or three days, I think all year. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. I, I had like three Christmases, a Christmas party. And now we're getting ready for New Year's, so it just never ends. Yeah, and I, I had Christmas this year at my brother's, and it was cool. I don't mind going all the way over there. Uh, but, you know, when you don't sleep in your own bed, it's a bit different. And there's kids around and people getting up early. And my brother got a new puppy, Ooh. so the puppy's up and stuff all the time. Um, and I was sleeping on the couch, which wasn't so bad, but it's in the main living room area where everybody kind of is. So in the morning at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., people get up. You know, you can't really sleep well. So, <laughs> regular doing that, hours. <laughs> doing that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'd be going to bed late, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a holiday. Yeah. So, I'd be up, you know, I don't see my brother off, and I'd be downstairs with him, you know, playing games and stuff to like two, three in the morning, then try to go upstairs, get, get some sleep, and then know I have to get up in a few hours. And then we did uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas morning with my brothers. Then I drove home to take care of a few things, then drove back for the evening supper. So Jesus. just back and forth. And then my family was here yesterday. I made them eggs Benedict brunch. Nice. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. It's fantastic. And uh, picked up Mario Party. So oh, I played some Mario Party did with you? Them. So yeah, we'll have to hit that up on our road to WrestleMania. Yeah, buddy. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but tired. So part of me is kind of like, Whew, all right, the first leg's done. Now we've got to get through New Year's and then lots of bitter coldness until spring yeah. and WrestleMania. Yeah, I know. It's like freezing rain today. It's pretty shit out. It sucks. I, mean, I didn't even have a white Christmas, really. Uh, there's snow here. I had a white one. There's snow here. But there's no snow in the city, which is crazy. Yeah, not much. Just a little bit, I guess. Uh, some sprinkles here or there. But yeah, no, no white Christmas. But I'm okay with that. Sprinkles, sprinkles. All right, so what do we got on the docket for today, Des? Well, first of all, before we get into things, I gotta let you know where I am in Red Dead, right? We've been doing that. Oh, yeah. Should we not be continuing the festivities? They were, yeah. Um, so, poor old Arthur kicked the bucket. Yep. It was quite sad up on that mountaintop, and he went with John as far as he could go, but his legs could not hold him up any longer. And uh, yeah, at the end, uh, Dutch takes off, and Micah leaves, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's sad. Micah Epilogue. shot me. Square in the he head. Shot you? Square in the head. And Dutch just watched. Mm. That was my ending. That was your ending? That was my ending. I didn't know you could have different endings. There was different endings. Yeah, there was. Huh. Yeah. Um, they just walked. They both walked for me. Oh, no. So I wonder what causes it. That's interesting. I was a bad motherfucker. So I was good. I was pretty good. Um, but yeah, they just both walked away from me. And it was weird the way Dutch acted, too. It seems like there could be alternate endings. It makes sense now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now I'm in the epilogue playing as Mr. Marston or Mr. Milton. Yeah. And uh, living on the farm. And it's fun. I'm having a good time, man. Really, really good scenery. Um, and it's, it's, geez, the story goes on forever, right, with this epilogue? Yeah, I'm just happy I'm done shoveling the shit. So <laughs> I'm, I've moved on from there. Um, I won't, I'm, I'm probably a little bit further than you, so I won't, I won't spoil too much more, but... Uh, I'm a little upset that he can't go back and be Arthur. I wish I had, would have known and I would have created a save point. But Yeah, well, I've created many, so I'm okay with that. But I also think like in the last game, Red Dead, they had some kind of thing where you could actually switch back at some point. They added something. Well, so I hope so. Switch back and I forth. hope so. so yeah. Because Arthur so was like, cool. I didn't, 
I wanted to play poker with Arthur and hear, you know, the same things he would say when he played poker or did this or that, you know. So there's, uh, yeah, the guy won, like I, uh, I think I told you last week, the the game, video game voicing award. So, uh, oh, really? People, yeah, people are really attached with that character of Arthur Morgan. So it's pretty cool. I like to, to kind of check out voice actors and see uh, what they really look like, what they really sound like. And the guy's voice is similar, um, just with a little bit of a gruffness attitude. Yeah. Does he look like but, uh, what I would think? He look. He he definitely doesn't not look. It's not like oh, I wouldn't have pictured it. It's kind of it kind of does look fit fit, fit the look. I guess a little bit. Oh, what a game though! It's like I don't know. Probably the game I enjoyed the most this year. Yeah, yeah. it's good. There's been some great games. Uh, Nino Kuni two was fantastic. I liked that a lot too. Um, Monster Hunter was really good. But yeah, this one definitely was a special game. I'm playing. Um, uh, Smash Brothers as well too. I've been playing that a lot Sweet. over the holidays, playing with my family. So that's been pretty exciting too. But yeah, Arthur's gone, and I'm probably gonna wrap up the epilogue uh, this weekend. I guess you know maybe this evening. We'll see because I got uh, some time this holidays between now and New Year's. And uh, yeah, I agree with you, Red Dead. Two thumbs up, yep. three thumbs up. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I had a hard time going back to finish the epilogue or at least continue with the epilogue. Uh, it took me like a good week or two to get over the death of my Arthur Morgan. He was such a good character, man. Yeah. So good. All right. All right. Let's get into things, guys. The whole reason we're here is not for you guys to hear us talk about video games and nonsense like that. Talking Mania has been rolling out all year, and it is time for our year roundup. We're going to be handing out Dez and J-Bomb, their respective Takis of the year. The Takis. Takamania. The Takis. I just unveiled that to Jay just now live. So <laughs> he's, got, he's got to live with it. I'm living with it. It on purpose. It. So he can't choose a name and that's it now. Sucker. <laughs> Takis is good. I like it. I enjoy it. Cool. All right. So that's it. It's going to be our annual Takis. And uh, before we get into it, uh, we're not going to go too much over the coverage of this week. You know, they were taped, raw, smacked out. Not much went on. Uh, a few things to call it that I thought were kind of cool, though, before we get into things. Uh, did you see the holiday uh, street, street fight between Elias and Bobby Lashley? Uh, moments of it. Didn't really care about it. So the thing I really want to call about this that I thought was really, I thought it was really clever was during the match at some point, you know, they're using food, they're opening, you know, gifts, there's a guitar inside of it, it smashes it over Lashley. But the one thing that stood out to me that I thought was fantastic was he pulled up a bag, right? Like, you know, thumbtacks would come out of them and pour them on the ground. Yeah. But instead, he poured Legos all over the oh, ground. Fuck that is. And I was clever. like, oh yeah, it was good. And then Lashley took a bump onto the Legos, and I'm telling you, some of those Legos were jarred and stuck into his back for the rest of the match. Oh god, so, yeah, I, no Legos do man. hurt. Legos do hurt not as much as toy cars. Toy cars hurt way more than Legos. Just putting it out. I guess there. you you have a bit of experience walking around at home. I got kids, man. I got kids. Eh. But I remember being a kid stepping on those Legos and nothing more. So, you know, what would be interesting is they want to be PG, right? And they don't want to put tax down. Well, just start throwing some Legos down, man. They're going <laughs> to hurt and they're colorful and family friendly. Legos and toy cars. So. It'd be fun. Well, the crowd was cheering, Legos, Legos. Oh, God. So It seemed like uh, I watched SmackDown more than I watched Raw, like the holiday versions. And it seems like mm-hmm. they added in a whole bunch of like crowd cheering because like... During even Rusev and Shinsuke, they were going back and forth with Rusev Day, Nakamura, Rusev Day, Nakamura. And I couldn't see one fan actually like standing out of their seats and, and saying it. Yeah, I don't know because they have the week since they recorded it to That's add it, in, yeah. I guess, fans. But at the same time, maybe, maybe people were really behind Rusev uh, in this match. It wasn't a bad match itself. It was and, good, I thought. Hey, man. It was, I didn't know it was his actual birthday, too, on Christmas. Eh? It was so super we, Rusev Day. That's what it was. Yeah, so we it's a trifecta, and we know it was taped, but still, it falls on Christmas Day, and guys, we've been uh, waiting for Rusev to come out of the doghouse for quite some time now, and now he's on track for good things in 2019. I wouldn't mind a, a title feud with maybe, you know, bring back Aiden English, give him some time, and yeah. put those guys in a proper feud together, but good, it's a good way, and maybe the title will become relevant once again. So what happens to Shinsuke now, like... He's he is does he still have a contract with WWE? Like if I were him, I'd be like peace. Well, a lot of question marks. Uh, I don't know if, if it's bad booking. I don't know if it's him just not fitting in with the the formula, his mic skills, his whatever it is. Maybe McMahon just doesn't see it in him anymore. I don't know. Maybe sending him back down to NXT. Triple H has talked about that, moving people up and down. It, it shouldn't be, a, um, I guess, a punishment. And I mean, a lot of people would flourish down there. I mean, put Tyler Breeze down there. Every time he goes down there, they love him, yeah. right? They're not yeah. using him on the main roster. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm really curious. It's a question I've asked myself. What happens next mm. for the artist, Shinsuke Nakamura? So what else we got to take away before we get into our Takis? 
Well, you said you watched SmackDown, right? So I guess, you know, a few more things on SmackDown. Uh, Shane and The Miz. So Miz TV, right? He got Shane to go on and I guess agree now. Like getting back to the fans and letting them decide what happens. And the fans seem to be on board with the tag team of The Miz and Shane McMahon. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. I hope it's not an inevitable match at WrestleMania because that's going to be boring. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, but what I find funny about this angle, that trophy almost seems like their child and they have custody over it. Hmm. And even the way Shane talks about it, almost like just blatantly like it is their child. And, you know, so I, I just don't know if they're going to play on that a little bit. And then after they do break up, if Miss tries to get custody of the trophy. Oh God. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit funny and comedic, this angle. I don't know where it's going, but there you guys go. Have You have it. Shane and Miz are going to be a tag team on SmackDown. I, I assume they're going to go in the tag team title picture too at some point. So like Miz is, should be an is, is a face now Yeah, he kind of on the borderline of his borderline baby face, but still annoying heel. Like, you know, like kind of McMahon's the face of the tag team and he's the heel, but they're both going to get cheered. So I think the Miz is kind of leaning towards face now. So we'll see. Hmm. Odd. So somehow the Miz is a face and Daniel Bryan's a heel now. Yeah, they're shaking the things up. It's what funny because they were on the opposite ends not too long ago. Yeah. <clears throat> so McMahon gave us a Christmas present and we are getting those WWE Women Tag Team titles <gasps> next year, I guess in 2019, which is, uh, I guess, big news for the fans of the women's division and I guess for the women's themselves because, you know, they, I guess, need more titles because otherwise if you're not in... The title picture, you kind of get shuffled around, forgotten about, you know, packaged in these battle royale matches. And this gives the other women um, kind of a chance to shine. So that's pretty big news. Yeah, I wonder when it will be unveiled. I think it'll probably be decided at WrestleMania, I assume. I think they'll probably do it ahead of that. I feel like this is all tying in with the Sasha Bailey wanting to fight lead and Trish at WrestleMania. Mm. Uh, I, I really definitely foresee uh, Bailey and, and Sasha winning these titles. They've been tagging for weeks and. Um, they've been talking about it, and after McMahon talked about the tag titles, they were in a match immediately, uh, or I believe, I don't know. They're, they're, they're being highlighted, it's clear. You know, there's a few great tag teams in there that could obviously be in the mix, uh, but I just feel they're going to be the one destined to take these titles and then defend them against Trish and Lita at WrestleMania, which makes the match, I guess, a little bit more exciting now. Yeah, I guess. I still want to see... Bailey versus Sasha at WrestleMania, but I'll take what I can get. I'll take what I can get. Yeah, we never got that payoff, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, that's about it. That's all about all our holiday stuff. But guys, if you didn't check out the holiday shows, uh, one thing I would say, definitely check out the match of the week for me, uh, Natalia versus Ronda Rousey. Yeah, it was, it was It was really good. Just yeah. She did chain wrestling, the small things she was doing, the communication, you know, the way she looked concerned about Natty at certain points. Like She was doing things in the ring that half the girls in the roster don't do. So for her to be where she is now, it was really impressive. I'm not, even the big, I'm not even the biggest Ronda fan either, but like the match itself was really good. Uh, Natty looked great too. Uh, and, uh, just go check it out, guys. One of, one of the best women's matches on, on uh, Raw in, in months, at least. That's for sure. That's for sure. Probably Ronda's Man, maybe not the most exciting match, but probably your best wrestling match. So that's very cool. Cool, cool. All right, man. Enough of this fluff. Before we get into things, follow <clears throat> us at underscore Takamania. Check us out on Spotify, Podbean, wherever you get your kicks. We sell t-shirts. I don't know if you ever heard that before, but we do. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Takamania. Buy some merch. We're going to be having sales in the new year, so stay tuned. Right on, right on. And right before we get into things, let's take a second and... Uh... This is egregious. How is this allowed on the air? There should always be dance breaks every week on SmackDown. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Talkies on Takamania. So I'm super excited for this. We were talking about this, what we're going to do for the year end, and we decided to put together some categories. All positive, friends, because best the best. I know people are trying to get us to be more positive. So in the spirit of 2018, we're going to end things on a positive note. And the best of the best. Like Feel Jay the power. Da, da, da. All right, folks. So Jay Mom and I got some categories we're going to roll through. We're going to talk about it, and we're going to shoot the shit around it. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. He doesn't know what I have, and I don't know what he has. Ooh. So we'll be giving out our respective Takis to our favorites of the year. All right, what do you want to kick it off with, Des? 
All right, we're gonna roll through, and we're gonna say, comeback of the year 2018. Uh, Come back. Oh shit, come back. Hmm, I may have read. This guy's already failing on number one. (laughs) Well, what is it? What, uh, What did you What did you think it was? I got Drew McIntyre as my comeback superstar of the year. Um, he beat out guys like Daniel Bryan, which was at the top of my list as well. Um, but I got to give it to Drew just because I'm, I like the stories that he's been involved with a lot more. All right. Feel you, man. So my comeback superstar of the year, Drew McMahon. Ooh. I got Drew McIntyre as well. I think... You know, a lot of people would make the argument it would be Daniel Bryan. You know, after his retirement, he came back at WrestleMania. And I think with the right package and the right program and storyline, it could have been. Uh, I just feel like they kind of missed the boat in a lot of aspects. Uh, him becoming a heel was a bit confusing towards the end of the year. Uh, but I, I dig it now. But I think overall, Drew McIntyre, you know, when he left, he, you know, he wasn't in the right mindset. You know, he went through NXT, kind of proved that he could rebuild himself. And he's been a machine ever since. He's a monster on the mic. He cuts a good promo. I feel like he believes he's the best and the hardest worker. And the matches and the angles he's been involved with, it's been impressive. And there seems to be no stopping this guy. You know, he only suffered his first loss a week or two ago. And he's the first one to be entered in the Royal Rumble. So, Oh, you know, is he? Yeah, he's oh, been nice. announced. So we'll see what that means. I'm sure he's going to have an interesting program for WrestleMania. Maybe it'll be just an intercontinental championship match, but still, guys, that's pretty good. Um, you know, who knows? We've got a lot of time until then, but definitely Drew McIntyre, man. The guy just went and rebuilt himself, and he's just a beast. And that Claymore kick, eh? Oh, that Claymore kick. Actually, I have a pretty common theme throughout all my picks. It pretty much revolves around a few storylines, a few superstars, but uh, we'll, we'll get to there shortly. Sweet. All right. Next category I got is one that uh, I like because I like people who can deliver. And this one is da, 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 best on the mic. So basically, best on the microphone, best of promos, best at... You know, getting it under the crowd, the, uh, the skin of the crowd, you know, winning them over, saying the right things at the right moment, being put on the spot. Who you got, J-Bum? Well. Surprisingly, even though I don't like the guy, he is still the king of the mic. I put down Samoa Joe. Ah, nice, yeah. man. And I was thinking that, too. He's definitely on my honorable mention. I like uh, Samoa Joe quite a bit. I think he's definitely... In the top few that can really, really deliver an amazing, I guess, hateful or passionful or just really just good intense. Engaging. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I you know I'm I'm trying to look at this in all angles, phase, heel, you know, kind of ways that you can manipulate the crowd. He just kind of is more. He he doesn't hit, he doesn't hit all the check marks for me. That's true. But he's pretty da- he's pretty damn close. But I'm thinking another tw- 2018. Name, Another name up there, obviously, Paul Heyman, people are going to say. Oh, fuck Paul uh, he, Heyman. Oh, fuck him. He does talk good on the mic, uh, but it's kind of the same old story every time. Uh, but, He's been doing know, the same he, shtick for years. That, that's kind of it. That's yeah. kind of it. And uh, and Daniel Bryan's great on the mic as well, too. Yeah. Uh, I think he cuts a good promo. He's, he obviously goes in unscripted. He can throw out a few burns and jokes. Uh, I like kind of the silly hippie, hippie he is now, and he's making it work. Fickle. Um, Fickle <laughs> in the chamber and like, yeah, just ridiculous. But for me, uh, best on the mic, I'm going to give this to The Miz. Ooh. I have to, man. I have to. Two years uh, in a row. My, See, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll tell you what I think after. I, I just have to. I mean, you know, I don't, I find him a pest. I think he's probably one of the most boring wrestlers on SmackDown or even the entire roster. Not that he's a bad wrestler. He's just not entertaining. Yeah. But his mic skills, you love him or you hate him. This guy knows what to do. He can go out there. And since that, I guess, promo we caught on Daniel Bryan backstage, it just kind of opened up a new kind of portal in terms of his ability to be able to, I guess, really dig into who he's talking to, dig into the crowd, but then turn it around, be goofy, make fun of himself. You know, he's had so many different challenges. He brought his wife in this year. He's had his kid. Like, I don't know. I I just find The Miz for me is when he's out there, I actually want to listen to his promos just because I want to see if he's funny, if I want to punch him in the face. Yeah. Or, you know, I don't know. I just think he's uh, right now, Pretty damn good. See, for me, I had him last year. He was he was both of our picks last year. I think last year was the emergence of the Miz more than any other year. This year was just a continuation. 
And I kind of gave it to Samoa Joe because Samoa Joe knocked mm. a few out of the park. And I even had John Cena up there, but there just wasn't enough John Cena this year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think Samoa Joe has a, has a good case. I think if it wasn't the Miz, it would be Joe for me. Uh, I just I don't know. I just like the Miz. I think now what he's doing with Shane, and ever since the uh, the uh, world's uh, the best in the world tournament when yeah. he injured himself, like I really thought he injured himself. So he, he convinced he me of you. that. He got you. Yeah, he did, and uh, just the way he can make fun of himself when he went up and did a tag team match and got rolled up by this jobbing tag team, like, the fact that he didn't care about doing that, he'll he'll make himself an ass, you know, for the better of things, and uh, no, I, I, I'm always entertained with The Miz, and I don't even like him that much as a wrestler, but I'll always tune in. Well, he's definitely a good Mike guy, definitely a good Mike guy. Cute, sweet. All right, we move on now. So, best theme song. So... We can give one or two here. We can say best theme song, your favorite theme song this year. Yeah. Or we can say your favorite theme song that, you know, became, came out in 2018. Okay. Uh, what you got, my friend? Undisputed Era, man. I know, I think I might have picked him last year as well. And uh, secondary runner-up is Alistair Black's theme. I know it didn't come out this year either. But those two, every time they hit, I feel like this year especially had more impact. Um, so those are my two picks. Cool, man. I would pick uh, my favorite to listen to. It would be Undisputed Era as well. I love it. I think it uh, it has that feel of like, you know, NWO or DX. Yeah. Like yeah. it has that. And it make, when I listen to it, it makes my mind like, think about, well, what if this person joined? This person should join. Like I was texting you a week or two ago, like, man, when KO comes back, yeah. he should come up, you know, with the Undisputed right, cool. Era, you know? Oh, fucking right, man. Oh, oh that would KO. be sweet. Soon. So that's an awesome Soon. theme song. Soon. You haven't seen oh, Kale him coming Twitter? Back, him coming back soon, yeah. His name is Soon, sure. period. So good, so good. Oh, he changed his name? His name is Soon. To yes. Soon? Yeah. Oh, Very now I understand. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about, man? Yeah. Are you already drinking? <laughs> no, no, it's not noon yet. Oh, no, it is. I'll be drinking soon. <laughs> <laughs> but who but, you got? Uh, yeah, got so, so yeah, it would be Undisputed Era. My, my theme song for 2018... Well, actually, before I say that, I like Marty Skrulls as well, but that's outside of yeah, uh, that's, great. that's outside of WWE, right? So we're kind of I'm, I've kind of been forbidden to go into that realm, but I just wanted to go, you know, an honorable mention. This is purely WWE right now. We're talking about on on all of yeah, our yeah, yeah, for right sure, now. absolutely, absolutely. But I, you you were telling me about his theme song, and we were watching Ring of Honor like a week or two ago, and I it was playing, and like it's kind of stuck in my head since then. So good. So. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's whoop, good. Whoop. Yeah, that's it. That's what keeps being stuck in my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, 2018. Um, I liked uh, Cien Almas. I think he's got a really cool Ooh, theme song like when he comes it. out. I don't like a it. lot of energy kind of pumping up when he comes out. Um, you know, on my feminine side, Mandy Rose is kind of good a little oh, bit. It's not yeah, too Mandy bad. Rose is great. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I like her filter that that comes in the screen too. Oh yeah, because it kind of like when she walks out Porny. with. Um, Sonia, it like blurs whoever is out around her. It's so <laughs> it's good. Pretty fun. Just so her. good. So good. Uh, but yeah, my theme for 2018, I think, is going to have to be Drew McIntyre. Mm. Uh, if you actually listen to it on your headphones at any point and walk down the street, you'll walk down the street with swagger, man. <laughs> you think you're Drew Mac? <laughs> <laughs> man, it sounds like you. Nah, it just sounds like you're ready to, you know, to fuck shit up. Fuck it's shit. Uh, really, really pumping. And I remember I really liked this NXT version. And they switched to this one, and I was like, why? Uh, but I actually like this version now. Yeah, I'm not saying it's the best song out there, but in terms of the songs that came to the WWE in 2018, uh, I like this one. Uh, when it plays, uh, you know, the Warriors coming out to kick your ass. There you so, go. Yeah, it gets me hyped. It gets me hyped, that's for sure. I'm telling you, man, put it on, put it on your headphones. It's mixed really well, so it just like really kind of plays on the ears well. Now that I don't live in the city, it's very rare I have headphones on. It's very rare that I walk around outside listening to music. It's usually in the car. Uh, my son cannot get enough of Seth Rollins. He just goes, Daddy, burn it down, burn it down. And yeah. and now he's like in the Finn Balor one as well. So those are both two on top of my list as well. You got to get him to do the Finn Balor thing. He does, like, he does. Uh, we all do it in the car. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, it's pretty uh, It's pretty. Dude, tepid. you should be putting that up on social media. I just posted something about my kids rocking out to Seth Rollins this afternoon. Oh, so. nice, nice, nice. Okay, moving on on the list. Best finishing move of 2018. So, again, this could be your favorite finisher or the ones that kind of came to the main roster in 2018. I'm going to keep it with the theme of coming to the main roster. And cool. I'd like us both to say this right after the drum roll at the same time because I'm pretty sure All we right. have the same one. You're going to have to count it down for me. The Eclipse. Claymore. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, almost. <laughs> but you know what you were saying before? I didn't like, you know, when we were talking about Drew McIntyre earlier yeah. and we were saying, you're saying, oh, it's going to be themed with him a lot. And I was looking yeah. through them and I was like, finisher. And I was like, oh, you know what? Should yeah. it be Eclipse or should it be Claymore? Claymore. And then I, you know, it's my second one on there. And I don't know. It's between the two, so, I guess. I, it's, you know what's so good about the Claymore? It's quick. It could be built up. It's a, f- it's, it's so simple, but so effective. Hmm. It's a big boot with a slip, and it just the story behind it is great. And a guy like Drew size doing it, and the name, just the Claymore, man. Oh man, I think you're winning me over on this one. <laughs> <laughs> the Eclipse is dope but as fuck, though. I like the Eclipse. And it's funny because I was looking through stuff for 2018, and I was so heavy on Drew, right? So I'm trying not to, you know, lean too much one way. But you, you, you man, you got so many great points there. I remember seeing this guy when he first hit the move too. He was saying how it was an accident. He yeah. slipped when he was doing a drop kick, and he landed on his head. I think it was a match when he was in 3MB. You can actually go see it. Kind of falls in his head, and he tags out, and he's all kind of knocked out a little bit, and. Um, Oh, sometimes he hits this move like he's got no space, but he runs and, and does it with no room. Like, how is he doing this? Uh, he's yeah, a it's, it's a pretty cool move. He can pull it out of nowhere. I always liked the big boots. You know, I think Tess had it for a while. Yep, Tess And was. a few other. And it was a really badass move. This is kind of like, dude, he torpedoes his his foot into your face. And he's massive. So, it, yeah. If I was playing 2K19, it would be my move because you could just throw him against the ropes. And it comes out of nowhere, him. too, right? Boom. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like the Eclipse. Um, you know, I I want to highlight the women a little bit here. I think they've done, they've had a really good year, and that finishing move too. It can look really bad, but when somebody takes it really good, oh, like Mickey James, Oscar's taking it really well, yeah. and uh, Liv uh, as well too. So I don't know. I like it. I think it's new and fresh. I miss the stunner, so you kind of get a little exactly. Piece of that. It's the best variation yeah. of a stunner. And the first time I saw it, I was like, "What the fuck? They allow this to happen? It's so dangerous looking." And it's very, and even when she fucks it up, it looks badass. So that's it. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I'll keep my original, but I, I really like the Claymore. All right. All right. Oh, you know what I had as an honorable mention, though? Ooh, ooh. I had the Chaos Theory German Suplex. Who's this? That is Chad Gable's German Suplex. Oh, yes. That's badass as balls. Yeah. He won. Like, I think he, or no, they, they, they kicked out with, oh, they broke the pin up, but it was, oh, I love it. I love it. It's He's so, ah, str- like, oh, yeah. Bleh. Chad Gable's the shit. I want more for him. I've been drinking coffee all morning, folks. I'm a little bit uh, jittery. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's move on. Best angle of 2018. This is a tough one. Yeah, I was just about to say that. (laughs) This was a tough one, man, because it's like not a feud. It's just, right? Like, because we have best feud coming up later. So what did you choose for your best angle? So I'm going to sound super, I guess, lame here. Everyone's going to be like, of course. I'm going to say the Becky invasion, uh, the SmackDown invasion. I, I, I like that it was when Becky was hitting her peak. I think her getting her nose busted open, the blood. It, this is going to be iconic. Yeah. You're going to see this for years to come. Iconic. And it skyrocketed Becky even further, if possible, at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Now... I don't know if they followed up well since then. No, I agree. Um, I find her matches are really good. She's great in the ring. But I find in terms of their storytelling, like they're really letting this burn out and not taking advantage of kind of what they can be doing. They thrust uh, Charlotte into the picture and kind of did a carbon copy of what Becky was. They've given Oscar the title now, which, of course, I'm happy about. But, you know, what's going on with Becky? I'm assuming she'll go to Royal Rumble or she'll head into, uh, you know, fighting Ronda at WrestleMania or something, which is great. I guess the long-term picture for her is good, but yeah. she should be out there every week kicking ass, you know, just every week. And when you ever come down and just sit next to the commentator table and not do much, like, what do you, come on, guys. So that's my only worry. Mm-hmm. But the invasion angle itself, I remember I was talking to my wife and it happened. I turned and I'm just like, shut up, woman. And I was just <laughs> so focused on what was happening. Uh, she's had blood streaming down her face and she kept fighting like a warrior. Um, it was fantastic. It was for me uh, probably the best angle or best segment. It it, it definitely was my top two. Um, I almost wanted to put just the entire women's division. The whole this is the f- real evolution that we've seen in the last four months. I, I got to say it was that, their year. So yeah, it was their year. But I mean, like the evolution came. Stephanie brought it, like said it. You know what I mean? And then it kind of happened. But I think Becky Lynch is the first, like true involvement in in a woman's character where it's no longer about like just a gimmick like she's not a gimmick she's just becky lynch now she's not a 
uh, a steampunk. You know what I mean? She's mm-hmm. not. Uh, who's that new girl coming up who, who, with a woman's right? You know, she doesn't have this like gimmick to her. Lacey Evans. Yeah, yeah. she's not a fucking pirate. She's not. You know, it's none of those weird things that you see. And this is the real evolution of women. So I was going to put that as as the best angle, but hmm. I did finally decide on the entire Rusev Day. Oh. Movement of 2018. Oh, you win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> include no, but Becky's was really good. That was my number two. Uh, I got to give it to Rusev uh, with the culminating last week with him winning the championship. Yes, they dropped the ball with the whole Aiden English thing, but we had Aiden, Lana, and Rusev. All three of them. When Aiden would come out and sing, we were always hyped for it. We were talking about it every week on the podcast. So I'll it was my it favorite part. Day. Yeah, me too. Me the whole too. like you know like love triangle thing, and then it turned out to be a flop. I was like, "What? Come on, man!" Like, like it's yeah. so good, and they can fix it simply by having Rusev on next week on SmackDown, and him just saying, "Give me another chance," and then boom, Rusev Day again. Introduce yeah. him as the U.S. champion, and then and then bring it past WrestleMania, past WrestleMania, to Money in the Bank. Have him fucking screw him at screw him at some point later, and then have the two of them face off for that U.S. title. And, and and let's give the Rusev Day ending that we all deserve. Mm. Mm. I'm speechless. Yeah. I'm without speech. I like it all. <laughs> I am without speech. Uh, I watched that. I had I had added on this well uh, some other great angles this year where Alistair Black the who, whole who done it angle. Yes, very. Oh, that who was jumped very in. good. Had they had they filmed it from outside, kind of like the old school raw filming, right? And yeah. they're all like over overhead and not knowing who it was. And in the meantime, you have Gargano going on with Champa this whole DIY thing, which yeah. is a whole another angle of itself, which was amazing for that went a long time. And then you had no idea it was Gargano, right? Because this whole thing was going on. And while it was going on, it was Gargano all along. And he was so, a good guy uh, while it was going on, yeah, too, which is very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was really clever. NXT has a tendency to do these things that are just special. God, NXT is good, eh? Oh, God. Mm, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sure. All right. Next category we're going to be talking about, championship of the year. So what belt? And this could be whatever you want. Uh, last year, we said Intercontinental Championship. This year, for me, especially considering the last couple months, hands down, every pay per view that involved this title, I was I was excited for the match, and it was a SmackDown Women's Championship. I feel like it stole the show this year. Universal was crap. Uh, AJ held on to that WWE title. His run was great. However, there was no real competition for him. I found there was no real Samoa Joe storyline was good. But I just never felt like there was a chance Samoa would win. I guess Nakamura had the closest chance in 2018 of maybe taking it. But uh, and I thought the, Samoa was going to take it. Yeah, I did. And the Outside IC, of WWE 2K coming out, it might have happened. That's it. That's it. The IC title kind of took a not a backseat this year, but it was still pretty important. But Seth Rollins' run was very long as well. I don't like when they make open challenges on titles. I feel like it. I don't know. It's it's reserved for the U.S. Make a TV title if you want to do that. Uh, so yeah, well, I like I like what Ronda had um, kind of um, I guess suggested in saying you know after a cha- champion wins or keep, retains her title or wins a title at the pay per view the next night on Raw or SmackDown she should have an open challenge and then like that's once a month or something instead of uh, oh instead of the rematch clause that would be pretty cool they yeah they do an open challenge night. that'd be pretty or cool. I guess the, the person could come out and, and you know try to challenge again but like on a very very rare occasion you know yeah. we don't want it to be too predictable. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, the SmackDown Women's Champion definitely was a huge part of the WWE this uh, this year, and I also think uh, I would have picked that. Uh, but I think Carmelo's run was a little bit of a stain for me. Uh, I think nah. it, not that not that it was over Oscar and all that crap, or she beat Oscar. That's fine. It was more the case that I feel like she could have done a lot more as a heel champion. She could have been more like the Miz. Uh, and I feel like they just made her this coward, brought back James Ellsworth to keep her afloat, and they didn't need to. And it's kind of like, it's almost like a championship run that everyone's going to kind of forget. Yeah, but, but, so, but hold on. There was... Nobody is ready for Asuka! Carmella was. Carmella was ready <laughs> for Asuka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was clearly, clearly ready. She just needed James Ellsworth. That's it, dude. We all need a team James Ellsworth in our life. So who's your pick, uh, Ben? What's your pick for title? So, bet title, I'm going to go with the Intercontinental title once again. 
Uh, I, oh, really? I like Seth Rollins being the Intercontinental Championship. I find it's more circumstantial, too. Uh, the Universal Championship just wasn't there. Uh, the Women's Champion, uh, you know, Championship, it was great. The Women's Storylines were, feuds were great. But, you know, having Seth Rollins involved, Ziggler involved, you know, I don't know. I like where it is now. And uh, I like the matches that I've been putting on. And they've had some really good main events with the Intercontinental Championship match uh, matches. So uh, it's not like a big blowout. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's my yeah, number two title. title. And, and I think I, for, I, I, so. I actually like the NXT title as well, too. I think it's been pretty good this yeah. year. It's been had, had a lot of good champions. And dude, the North American title has had some oh. of the most best matches of the year. That's man. true. That's so true. Adam Cold having that title ricochet. It's only been two people. But first of all, the belt is beautiful. Yeah, it's I love the strap. Yeah. Just the color of it. It's really, really I'd nice. Come, I'd come all over it. <laughs> And, and then the matches themselves around that belt have been amazing. So, you know, I might even say the North American Championship just hasn't been around long enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Intercontinental title is just, it seems to mean a lot to the WWE. Uh, the U.S. title, obviously not so much. Probably be the worst of the year. But, uh, you know, the IC title, man, I like it. It's beautiful. And uh, Seth Rollins as a champion. Now uh, we got Ambrose, so we'll see what, the, what happens. Yeah, there. that kind of tarnished it for me. I'm surprised mm. none of us mentioned the green belt from the greatest Royal Rumble ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why we didn't. Yeah, there is. All right. This one's a big one. I know. This one was a hard category. This one was a hard category. Um, the best match of the year. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. I think it deserves a drum roll. Do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go first. All right. Hold on. Here you go. Ready? Johnny Gargano. Versus Champa, take over New Orleans. Which one was that? One, two, or three? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. Which one? Okay, what happened? In it was that where the mat was pulled back? The street fight? Uh, no, it wasn't the. It wasn't the. It wasn't the ten count one where he was like handcuffed on the stage at the end, and then he got up by slinging off the stage, and okay. then that wasn't that one. It was one of their first ones. Okay, but go back and look at. You probably didn't even see this one. No, no, I watched one, them. One, I watch them all. Yeah, you see them yeah, all. I watch them all. This is their highly, their high, highest rated one as well too. Uh, they say it's going to be kind of in the annex history books forever. But these guys have had phenomenal matches. I have honorable mentions, and some of the honorable mentions are just the rematches. You know, okay. Uh, don't name your these, honorable these, mentions though until I name mine. <laughs> okay, all I don't right. Want to be one of those. But okay, that was a great match, and and you know what? The third one was almost the yeah, it was definitely the worst of the three. And the ending where he... It was the booger out of his nose the whole time, but I kept thinking, can't stop thinking about he it. Also like a worm. He also it's missed the He also It's like a worm, punt. and it's going in and out of his nose. It was <laughs> creepy. I have... And then he got rid of it, and then more came back. Well, Johnny Gargano, he's a snotty guy. Yeah. Um, I, honestly, man, I feel like the women stole the show this year. I feel like all their matches were really good. All the big matches from the women this year were really good. Um, actually, last year, our match of the year was... Mine was Ronda Rousey... And uh, and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania with Steph and Triple H, but this year I got to give it to Becky and Charlotte in that last woman standing match. I feel like it it con- it just brought 2018 for the women's division together. And I, I wasn't thinking of NXT. That's true. There's definitely, I mean, Adam Cole, Ricochet. Uh, that was Alist- my runner up. Alistair I love that Black match. and and Velveteen Dream. I mean, name your match at NXT Takeover. Zero. Champa and Velveteen Dream put on an amazing match as well too. Yeah, they did. They so, all did. They were, it's just what a year. But yeah, another runner up I had. I guess main roster. If I would say main roster, it would be Becky versus Charlotte That's at right. Evolution. I like their match at Evolution. Yeah. I thought that was really oh, good. Oh, Evolution, man. Yeah. Lucy's. Yeah. Yeah. The TLC match was fantastic, too. So the women, like we've been saying, it's kind of a theme. Uh, the women, it was their year. They stole year. the show. Definitely. Um, all right. So that brings us to the best pay-per-view of the year. Who do you got? PPV. 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 My best PPV of the year. Um, Evolution, man. Hey, me too. I actually liked Evolution. <laughs> I thought that was my favorite one. I thought all around. I remember looking at it and being like, I remember like really kind of like, okay, I'll tune in tonight. Yeah. And then the card kind of looked all right. And I was like, well, they could have done this. They could have done that. They yeah, could have brought back, you know, crazy. these people. They could have had Naomi have a match with Asuka instead. Or they could have had Ember Moon face Asuka. Or, you know, but like in the end, everything more or less made sense. That Battle Royale match, although the veterans got eliminated quite early, uh, they told cool. lots of stories in that match. Yeah. And it's very hard to tell stories in Battle Royales. And yeah, I don't know, man. I just thought the whole card was uh, very surprising and uh, really, really refreshing. I liked it. It had an NXT feel. The crowd was blocked out. I remember texting you going, okay, I'm going to come down. And you were like, 
eh, it's not even really a pay-per-view. And we were yeah. like, shit. And then it just, I guess because our expectations were so low, but it was just match after match after match. It had that NXT feel. You could tell that uh, different hands were guiding the show that night. And to me, it was just phenomenal. And then to end it with my match of the year, Becky versus Charlotte, was just, just perfect. Perfect. Perfection. Loved it. We got to see Ronda beat up Nikki Bella, too. So that was pretty good. And we saw the final of the uh, Mae Young Classic, yeah. which was great as well, too. Yeah. NXT Championship, Shayna Baszler, Baszler versus Kyrie Sane. Uh, I mean, you know, Trish and Lita was a great way to open up the card. That fans were behind song. it. What was her it was name? Exciting. Kyo Shang or whatever? Io, Io Shirai. There you go. Ah. Yeah. The emergence. Yeah. Love her. That's yeah, it, guys. So, man. yes, that is that is it for me to evolution. Otherwise, I would say uh, it was WrestleMania 34. Oh, no. Not me. Didn't like that's it. my second place. That's my second place. Uh, I'm still saying evolution. I'm just saying that's my, that would be my Honestly, favorite. if I had to pick my most memorable, it would definitely be uh, the one in Saudi Arabia, the second one. Because it was so freaking bad, it was good. Oh, the, whoa, that's not pay-per-view of the year. If we were going to say worst of the year, I would say Saudi Arabia or Survivor Series. Oh, Survivor Series was horrible. Yeah, they were both terrible. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we're so <laughs> negative. Okay, let's get positive again. Des, tell me your rookie of the year. Rook, r- r- rookie of the year. So this is for anybody who made their debut on the... I don't need to explain it to anybody, no. do I? They're, they're <laughs> new. Roster. They're new. Uh, my rookie of the year, Ronda Rousey. Here comes Rousey! Me too, bro. Me too. You had that ready. You had that ready. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I mean, there's yeah, no hands down. It. Hands down, Ronda Rousey. Uh, again, I'm not the biggest Ronda Rousey fan. But if you look at her, she basically made her debut at the Royal Rumble. This is less than a year ago. Mm-hmm. And look where she is now. Uh, if you guys are doubting her and you can say whatever you want, you have your own opinion, it's cool. Uh, go watch the match against Natty this week on Raw. It was really good and one of, if not my favorite match of Ronda Rousey. Uh, it wasn't that whole, wow, she could fight at WrestleMania 34 with Triple H and that stuff. It was just solid. She didn't have uh, one bad cons- match. The concern in her eyes, uh, though, you know, the way that she kind of will, will look or twist or even the chain wrestling that she's doing on the ground was like almost fresh because it was kind of had an MMA feel to it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, man. I, I, I like what she's doing out there and she's good at telling a story. She's, she can cut a promo on her own now. I'm not saying she's the best. She's nowhere near it. But now she's better than half the women on the roster easily. So She lacks character. And I know that sounds weird. She lacks like... Um, she needs... Her- <sighs> Her character needs to evolve a little bit further than it is for her to be a completely well-rounded It will superstar. be, though. Yeah, I know it will be. But I will say that everybody thought that Kurt Angle was the fastest to switch over, and Ken Shamrock as well. But honestly, I think Ronda Rousey, she's going to beat them all to the punch. Mm, we'll see. In the long run, maybe. I think Angle was phenomenal, how he kind of was able to kind of keep a steady pace and wrestle the way he did. There's obviously a bit of, um, I guess, awkwardness. And Angle, you look, the first time he cut a promo, I mean, it was pretty good. So <laughs> That's true. Angle I don't, was way I don't better know if I go that far. I don't know if I go that far, but we'll see. In the long run, she might leave more of a legacy. But then again, Kurt Angle, you know, he's pretty, uh, he's Kurt Angle, man. Well, we'll see how long run it lasts, right? So we'll see. Cool, so we're on the same page, Ronda Rousey. Absolutely, absolutely. There you go, guys. Suck All right. it, because I know you guys are probably salty, the ones who don't like Ronda Rousey, but man, there's no denying it. Rookie of the year, who's a better rookie? Come on. Come at me. Come at me. But you say let's, talk about, but hoes and tricks. let's talk about Feud of the Year. Yeah, buddy. Mine, mine's, mine's, off, mine's off a bit. We probably are on the same page here. Uh, I'm pretty predictable here just because I've been really getting to NXT this year. And uh, just the matches they put together, how long this was drawn out. And, you know, this guy, Champa and Gargano, this would be my feud of the year. And the fact that he kind of came out of nowhere, won that NXT championship. And the matches these two put on, the emotion they've laid out there, the story that they've told, uh, just the fan, I guess, interaction and them committing to this feud and just these matches that they put on were fantastic so So this overall for me is the best feud of the year there's no denying that from a wrestling perspective you are 100% correct I can't argue at all Uh, my pick is different it's a little bit outside of the box I got Becky Lynch versus everybody on Twitter I think she's Ah. just destroyed the game Um, what pisses me off the most is when wrestlers don't carry their kayfabe to Twitter and she's been doing it 
and she's been doing it really well. And it's just pretty much I wrote down Becky versus everyone. Just and that kind of covers hey, what you, everyone on the roster too, right? Everybody on the roster, Ronnie, fucking the man, anybody on the roster, she's gonna pick, you know pick out, and uh, she's either going after Animal from the Road Warriors. I mean, she's just yeah, I saw that. That was great. So good. <laughs> Road Warrior thinks. Like, yeah, you don't think. I was like, oh, <laughs> shots fired. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, I think that's a great, really creative answer. I'm definitely on the same page. I think Becky's had an amazing, uh, I guess, feud with many people out there. People might say Charlotte, but nah, man, everybody. She's everybody. been taking on everybody. That's why she's the man. It really would have been Becky versus Ronda had uh, that fucking cunt not punched her in the face. Oh, yeah. I loved uh, just the aggression she came out and started nailing her with that chair. Just, and just like even when she was... Oh, the last few pay-per-views with Charlotte and Becky and even Asuka, just like, it's been really gruesome to an extent. Or something we haven't seen in a long time. Like, this might be normal Attitude Era stuff, but it's kind of Attitude Era stuff. Yeah, so, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. very, very good. Um, but that brings us, this is a pretty big one here. The brand of the year. Now, can we go outside of WWE here? If you want to. Okay. If you want to. All right. So, brand of the year, Des, lead us off. All right. Brand of the year for me. Um, I'm going to go with NXT, man. Raw, SmackDown, WWE. I mean, I guess NXT is WWE, but it's been a hard year for me for Raw and SmackDown, getting invested and enjoying the storylines. Yep. I think it's been a tough year for the, I guess, product in general. Ratings have been down. Their stocks have been down. Uh, they're at the point where they're actually mentioning this on TV themselves, incorporating into storylines, bringing back the McMahon. Uh, McMahon's, we get Vince as a Santa Claus this year, this uh, this past week, just to show us how much they're trying to shake things up. And um, I don't know. I, I, for me, it's just every time I tune into NXT, you know, I don't think about the main product and I just enjoy what they have to offer. And I'm loving the superstars they have. Everybody goes out there, they're hungry. Uh, they basically take the most out of the opportunity and they always put in a good show. And I love the crowd. I love how uh, intimate the arena is. I like how much the crowds are always popping. I was watching a few matches the past few days. I was watching back um, Ricochet versus Adam Cole and Gargano versus Ciampa. And man, the crowd just are in it from the start to finish. And uh, it's exciting. It's a whole nother feel. The superstars are less restricted, and it's more organic, and it, uh, it, you know, it's really won me over this year. I got nothing to add. I got NXT as well. It definitely stole the show this year. Uh, the future is bright. It's freaking bright. Um, I will say that in their, to their advantage, NXT airs on WWE Network, so there is never commercials through it. I feel like that gives them a slight edge because the mood is never broken, and uh, you know, three matches. And in an, on an hour show, short pay-per-views, all those things are, you know, all pros for them. So I feel like they have a slight advantage there. There's less room to fill, but definitely NXT won it this year, man. 100% over. Nice. And like you said, man, I, I hope the future is bright, but I also am a little bit weary on what happens moving forward. You know, if they pull up, you know, uh, Velveteen Dream, who's putting on amazing matches in NXT, you know, will it translate well into the main roster? And will we no longer have those Velveteen, Velveteen moments, uh, you know? So even with Cien Almas, right? Like, we don't get those amazing matches he was putting on in NXT anymore. Well, we got if one Gargano with comes hey, up, Mustafa Ali on, on SmackDown was, yeah, was freaking for, amazing. But. Absolutely, for sure. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm just a little bit worried. And I just hope the NXT continues to do beautiful things in 2019. We say that a lot, though. We say, what's NXT going to do once these new guys come up? Once these new guys come up? Seth Rollins left. The guys from the New Day left. Like, there was a lot of people who left NXT, and it still just gets better and better and better. So I have, my faith is with them. And the future is bright. It is. Word. This is going to be a tough one. Tag Team of the Year. There's slim pickings, in my opinion. Um, I struggled with the most and I just came down to who is that tag team that I always enjoy watching any match that they're in. I will not fast forward through it and it's simple. It's nothing great. It's meat and potatoes and it's the ball. Hmm. When you say meat and potatoes, I was like, yep, I know what he's, I know what he's going to say. <laughs> good old Seamus. That's it, buddy. Yeah, those guys always put in a good match. Um, so do the Usos, and so do the New Day. Uh, any one of them could be considered the tag team of the year. I agree. I think uh, you don't want to fast forward to the matches, and you're going to get your 
dollars worth or if you don't pay for them your 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 free cables worth your time so <laughs> so for me i wanted to kind of think a little bit outside the box here and not go with the standards a uh, tag team that i really enjoyed this year they did a lot together they could have done more uh, i liked drew mcintyre and dolph ziggler Ooh, i was gonna say the b team but <laughs> <laughs> I did. You could have even had that. BT, BT, I enjoyed go, the run. Go, go. Yeah, Dolph. I enjoyed the run. I thought they had a good look. I think it rejuvenated Dolph Ziggler. I think Dolph Ziggler would have had a miserable year without uh, without Drew McIntyre. Yeah, and made him a lot more believable, a lot more lethal. Uh, he had the he was Intercontinental Champion. Uh, Drew McIntyre was protecting him. You know, they had a lot of resemblance towards Shawn Michaels and Diesel. So that was kind of cool to have that. I guess nostalgia a little bit tied to it and. Uh, I didn't like the way they broke up. I thought they could have done, you know, a lot better. Maybe they could have done it for the IC title or, but it was just kind of, I don't know. The matches they put had they've had since are great, but the breakup could have been a little bit better. Uh, but for me, uh, I like the tag team. I like their finisher. the zigzag with the Claymore kick and uh, everything these guys did together were really good. People complained that week after week they were in the main event, but they're in the main event for a reason, man. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We should have done tag team of the year that aren't actual tag teams. That would have been fun to do as well. But mm-hmm. no, I agree. They they had a good run. Uh I just don't see them as a as a you know, a tag team. I always saw them as individuals. Well but. that's it. That's why they worked. You know, yeah. and they were a legit tag team. I think they were the tag team champions. Yeah, no, they were. Well they were. They were. Yeah. Yeah. So I had runner up runner up for me was uh, Undisputed Era, just because Oh, the yeah. Dennis Pudera and they're having amazing tag team matches. And uh, outside of the WWE, I mean, the Young Bucks, you got to give them For credit. For so. sure. Yeah. The Buckaroos. All right. So that brings us to our final two. <laughs> I can do better than that. Male Superstar of the Year. Do you want do you want the honors? I think we have. Oh, you go first. Okay. I I I, don't, I doubt we do because honestly, I think one of the biggest things that WWE were talking about this year was no, I guess, star that really stood out to them this year that was going to take the brass ring and run with it. Like even Roman Reigns, right? Like he's the closest you got, and then he leaves, and well, you know, who's who who's really the man at that point? Well, some would say Seth Rollins. But That's who I'm really? saying. <laughs> was he really? <laughs> I got Seth Rollins on there. He's my pick of the year. I think he delivered some of the best matches. Uh, he was their Iron Man. Uh, Raw in Montreal was so special. Uh, mm, it was. It was so special because of Seth, or for Seth. Uh, I know he just did it for me, man. He was always the, what's the word? He was like that fallback guy. He was the common denominator. He was always involved. I think this guy could be the universal champion. Uh, I'd like to see. I think he could rumble. be. I think he could be the guy. Uh, I just think that considering where he was booked, I guess this year, he always does an amazing job. Always yeah. kind of uh, seizes the opportunity. I think if the WWE was like, he's our guy, we're pushing him now, and he's our number one Universal Champion every week. Uh, yes, he would be the superstar, the male of the year, no problem. And you know what? To a certain degree, I agree with you. He probably is the male superstar of the year. Um, you know, there's other picks, AJ Styles, but again, we've talked about how his run really wasn't that exciting. Mm. Uh, Braun Strowman's been in our face every single week. Man, uh, he's he's been potentially the most popular, but hasn't won that championship. Uh, so, is he, you know, the superstar of the year? You can be, you can make that argument because he has been really important. He's done a lot of things this year, and uh, then there's Champa. A guy who basically was in a tag team, uh, you know, broke up with his, his tag team and then went on to win the NXT championship. I think a lot of people really wouldn't have thought that. And he's turned out to be one of the biggest heels in NXT history and the WWE. Mm-hmm. So Rollins, I think he is the man. And I think he should be the male superstar on the main roster. Uh, but, you know, out of the hard work and development I've seen out of him, I'm going to give this to Champa. Oh, look at look at Dez going to NXT. I like it. I like. I didn't. Even, my mind didn't even go there. But you're absolutely right. If there's a guy who had a year and a hell of a year, it's definitely Champa. We don't remember. We don't think a lot about it because you know we, a lot of people don't watch NXT and they don't really talk about it too much in the main roster. Unfortunately, maybe they should a little bit more. Uh, but man, look what Champa's done over the past year. Look at the matches he's had. If you look at five star matches or close to four to five star matches over the past year, he was in several of them. So you know, it's not by coincidence. I mean, Gargano's also been there, but he's had great matches with Velveteen as well, too. And, you know, uh, you know, guys, come on. If you don't know who he is already, check it out, man. Check it out. Is there even a point of discussing our final topic? Probably not. Probably not. 
guys, girls, whatever you want to call it. The we'll talk female. to you next week. Have a good one. <laughs> and uh, we'll be kicking it. The female superstar of the year. Nia Jax. Yeah, I'm not a monster. <laughs> I live under <laughs> your bed. I'm not, I'm not a monster. Uh, I'm not like a monster. Uh, Hit that sound Nikki. bite. Play with Nikki. I'll play with you, Becky. One more. I wasn't meant to be the talk of the entire industry, but here I am. Becky Lynch, I mean, there's no discussion, right? I thought it was Nia Jax. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. I mean, with that punch, she changed the whole course of history. No, God, guys, it's got to be Becky Lynch. A lot of you are going to make the argument, well, it only happened in Survivor Series or SummerSlam, or whatever. Who cares, man? Who cares? Nothing was happening before then. Nothing. You know, there wasn't much going on. Uh, I think that time when she just decked Charlotte from behind, the crowd it popped. They were excited. The only other time this year they were that excited was when Bailey turned on Sasha, and they did nothing with it. But they had a chance to do it again, and uh, it was magic. And since then, Becky's been seizing the opportunity. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the WWE doesn't book her properly still, but every time she gets that chance, she kicks ass. We talked about her Twitter game. Uh, you know, she look, she, she, she was the best feud of the year. She, she took everyone, everybody. She took so, it I mean, I just hope that, uh, you know, it continues into WrestleMania. She continues to build up that momentum, and the WWE allows her to. But there's no denying that she's a female superstar of the year, debatably the superstar of the year. I would say superstar of the year, totally, 100%. I feel like she's, and, and I'm talking across all boards. I don't care what anybody says. I know people say, oh, but the wrestling in New Japan and ROH and fucking the elite and all this crap. Yeah, cool, whatever. But Becky Lynch changed the game. She is the, in my opinion, the absolute pioneer of taking that next step in the women's revolution. Uh, I hope, Ronda Rousey's going to kind of take a... I want Ronda Rousey to go down the same path that Becky's gone. No more gimmicks. I want to see real-life badasses, and I think Becky Lynch is, is you know paving that paving that lane, man. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And, and to be perfectly honest, like, Ronda Rousey wouldn't be far on this list down. Uh, you know, she's worked hard. And I'm not saying she's the best wrestler, but in terms of like who stood out the most this year. Oh, yeah. Ronda Rousey's been pretty fantastic. Her yeah. matches, considering last year where she'd just be throwing some punches with Triple H to chain wrestling with Natalia Hart this week and showing the emotion she had. Guys, I'm telling you, check the match out. I know I've said it once or twice. Ring psychology. That good. I mean. It was, it's fantastic. It's, it's there. But Becky Lynch, she's done magic this year. Uh, J-Bomb said too. She's kind of set us on course. She's pushing fast forward on this revolution. And we've had amazing matches since she's kind of stood out. Uh, we've had now, you know, uh, last women standing matches, TLC matches. Yeah, Charlotte's been involved, kind of somewhat copying uh, Becky Lynch's, uh, I guess, recipe. But, you know, it allowed Becky Charlotte to kind of, uh, I guess... I guess breathe a fresh uh, kind of breath of fresh air. Yeah, she was kind of lost for a while. Totally. It helped Charlotte. It's helped Osaka now as well too. So I think it's kind of uh, it's been kind of important as well. And their reemergence and the match we've been getting, guys. We, we're not only just getting matches that are closer to the Attitude Era with all these, I guess, tables, ladders, and chairs. But now they're between women, which is badass as well too. Super badass. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't expect to have these types of matches every month. Uh, it wouldn't be good for the women's themselves. But, uh, dude, man, I, I've been liking women's wrestling, and they just amped it up since uh, SummerSlam this year. So, Becky, man, uh, keep doing your shit. And I'm excited to see, you know, where she's come now. Imagine in one, two, three years from now what she's going to be capable of because she gets better every week. So, her and Ronda, if they are on the track to collide at WrestleMania, Ooh. dude, man, this might be the main event of WrestleMania. And yeah, and, I, and I've said it before that I don't think there'll ever be women uh, main eventing WrestleMania. But if there is, and we, we thought it would be Charlotte and Ronda, it better be Becky and Ronda. I don't want to see a triple threat match. I want to see Becky Lynch versus Ronnie. I want to see the trash talk. I want to see it all. It's going to be freaking awesome. I'm really worried about that too. And I do feel like it will be that triple threat match, which would be ridiculous i hope the fans kind of voice their opinion let them know to maybe take it in another direction and uh let it be becky versus ronda because you know that's going to be oh that's going to be magic charlotte oscar too would be fine with me at wrestlemania and just give it to the two that earned it you know really give it to the two that earned it yeah yeah
And with that, we head into the WrestleMania season. We got Royal Rumble on the docket next. I think it's the end of January. And then we roll into the WrestleMania season, which we're really excited about, guys. The year-end is always fun at Talkmania. We want to thank you for another great year. On behalf of J-Bomb, I'm out. Dez, say bye. Happy Rusev Day. Happy 2019. Royal Rumble, WrestleMania. Let's do it, brother. King, Bacha!